Hey, Sub Furies! After the last Dragon Tournament episode, I had one question that kept popping up in the comments section. So, this one comes from Joseph Bruce, who asks whether or not the Armor Wing and the Bow Napper could be related, given they're so similar. It's true, they look really similar, and they both scavenge for things to use as their armor, either bones or scrap metal. Let's get started. Now there are a lot of species that look very similar to one another, the Night Fury and the Sand Wraith, the average student and a caffeinated sloth. If I don't make it through these exams, tell my girlfriend I love her. The Armor Wing and the Bone Napper. Now two dragon species that look so similar tends to imply one thing, that they had a common ancestor. That there was a species a long time ago that both the Bone Napper and the Armor Wing are related to. Think of them as like cousins a hundred times removed. Now as I talked about in my Snow Fury video, which you can watch here, that ancient species of dragons might have split off into two groups. Group A and Group B. Now as Group A and Group B split off from one another, they began to develop different characteristics as they adapted to their environment. Different bone structures, different abilities, and different defenses. So what makes the Armor Wing and the Bone Napper similar? What makes them different? And most importantly, why are they different now? The most obvious similarity that the Bone Napper and the Armor Wing share is also their most distinctive characteristic. They both scavenge and collect things from their environment to use as armor to protect them. The reason for this in the Armor Wing is that unlike other dragons, the armor wing has softer and more vulnerable scales. Now, the same reason isn't given for the bone napper, but when we look closely, we can see that they have almost identical uh, skin textures, so we can infer that they probably have that same weakness. A weakness that prompted both of these species of dragons to find other ways to protect themselves. It's obvious they share a lot of uh, general similarities in how they look, with bulbous glowing eyes, crooked horns, and their general body shape. But they also share some very specific and peculiar characteristics as well. Both dragons share thin membraned wings, but they also share exactly nine veins of bone that extend to sharp tips. Neither of these dragons have any venom, and Rise of Berg notes that both of these species of dragons tend to be isolated and live more alone, though for different reasons that we'll get to in a bit. They tend to be the same colour, but it is worthy of noting that the armor wings titan wing form is a more vivid green, while the titan wing form of the bone napper is a reddish orange. One of the more peculiar similarities that the bone napper and the armor wing share is in their eggs. The armor wing's egg is a vivid green flecked with gold. The exact shade of gold that we see the bone napper's egg is made entirely out of. It's pretty likely that they had a common ancestor with perhaps golden eggs, but the armor wing evolved away from that as it moved towards more bushy, foresty, green environments. Gold eggs would stick out pretty badly to anyone looking to make a dragon omelette. But what matters is how and why are the Bone Napper then different? But before I get to that, take a look at this amazing piece of fan art sent in by Raid Deviant featuring our Supreme Leader Mishka. All hail Mishka. And Toothless. I want that on a t-shirt. I really want that on a t-shirt. Hmm. By the way, there's a link to their Deviant Art channel with a bit more how to train your dragon art down in the description below. Two of the biggest differences between the Bone Napper and the Armor Wing are pretty obvious. Bone Napper scavenge for bones, while Armor Wings scavenge for scrap metal. This also leads to a massive discrepancy in their armor rating, with the Armor Wings 50 to the Bone Napper's only 18. Nearly one third is good. Secondly, they have different fire types. The Armor Wings fire is noted to be an oxy acetylene flame, and while the Bone Napper is only noted to have billowing flames, we note that it's almost identical to the Red Death, which is explained to have volcanic pyroclastic clouds. Only thing that the Bone Napper really excels at is stealth, with an 8 to the Armor Wings 1. Their roars are also different to one another, so much so that the Bone Napper has a distinct attack known as a thundering roar. It's far longer and far louder than the Armor Wings. They also relate to other dragons in slightly different ways. Rise of Birth notes that both armor wings and bone nappers tend to live alone and in isolation, but the reasons for doing so are slightly different. The armor wing tends to live alone for protection, but the bone napper tends to live alone because other dragons don't want to come near it and it frightens them. Poor bone napper. So lonely. I mean, what did the bone napper ever do to you, huh? 
Dragons. So exclusive. Finally, while it's not confirmed, the Bone Napper does appear to be slightly larger than the Armor Wing, which is about 21 meters long. 70 feet for you heathens. Though this isn't confirmed. Now we ask, why are they different? What happened for these two species of dragons to develop in this way? My theory comes down to one thing. The difference in their flames. Imagine if there were two groups of that common ancestor, Group A and Group B. Group A begins to develop and evolve a hotter oxyacetylene flame. Of course, both Group A and Group B need to figure out ways to protect themselves given that they have soft and vulnerable skin. Group A then figures out that it can weld scrap metal into a suit of armor onto its skin with this new hotter oxyacetylene flame. Now, oxyacetylene burns at about 3,000 400 degrees Celsius, 6150 Fahrenheit for you heathens, which is plenty hot enough to melt the armor and swords that it would probably find to add to its armor. But Group B didn't have those flames. No, actually, pyroclastic volcanic fumes and gases only burn at about 1000 degrees Celsius, 1800 Fahrenheit for you heathens, which is nowhere near hot enough to melt metal like Group A. So Group B had to find another way to protect itself. So what did our Group B do? Well, at first the answer seems obvious. They just went and found skeletons and bones and used that for armor, but there's a couple of issues for that. Bones aren't actually that good armor. They expose vulnerable holes, they can crack under fire blasts, and they can be broken pretty easily by other dragons. So why bones? I really doubt the bone nappers are just going through a goth phase. Well, Reiserberg has an interesting quote on this. It says, its choice of armor makes it unpopular with other dragons. And you're thinking, what, why? What, what possible reason could there be for that? I mean, all it's doing is wearing dead dragons as fashion accessories. You see, Group B, the dragons that would become the Bone Nappers, developed a different strategy to protect themselves. Fear. <laughs> be afraid. Fear can protect it from other dragons and other humans, and from that it logically gives rise to the rest of its abilities. A louder, more thunderous roar is far more intimidating. If it becomes a lot larger than the average dragon, it becomes a lot more imposing. I mean, and its stealth allows it to remain pretty mysterious. I mean, up until the episode, it was a legend. So there you go, the Bone Napper's bones aren't intended to be armor like with the armor wing. They're meant to be terrifying enough that other dragons don't even want to come near it. And it succeeded. So there you go, are the Bone Napper and the Armor Wing related? Yes. At some point in the past, they shared a common ancestor that split off into Group A and Group B. Group A developed hotter flames and welded metal to give them armor, and they became armor wings. Group B didn't have that fire, so it developed a new strategy, fear to keep other dragons away from it, and they went on to become the Bone Nappers. But that's all from me, Self Furies. My question to you is, what is your favorite dragon ability that we have seen so far, and what dragon is it from? On a side note, I'm heading into exams right now, and your support means a lot to me. Uh, I'm really stressed, and I'm sorry if I don't bring out videos quite as quickly. As soon as I'm done, I'll be making more videos than I ever have before. In the meantime, follow me on Twitter, Wattpad, Facebook, email me, or read my books at the links in the description below. Stay nerdy, Subfuries, and I'll see you in the future.